If you're a composer, especially someone who's focused on classical training or classical... Oh, let me try to start over. I'll wait for that garbage truck. Yeah, it's still going. <laughs> okay, I think the truck's gone. Oh, truck's back. <laughs> If you're a composer, especially someone who's worked with orchestras or is classically trained, you know that a big part of your education comes from analyzing sheet music. A lot of composers tend to pour over scores of long dead composers and analyze them note by note to see exactly what their intent was and how they created the music that they made. But sound designers, we don't really get a lot of opportunity for score study or analyzing an equivalent of sheet music. There's no real place to really look at a bunch of sound design and see how it was made from scratch and analyze what sorts of elements are going into each and every sound. But what if there are a way to analyze pro-level sounds layer by layer right within Reaper, being able to see the effects and timing and everything you want? You'd be able to hear what a pro sound designer's intent was. You'd be able to hear the individual samples they're using to make up a finished design sound, and you'd be able to see what layer is contributing to what part of the sound. By being able to do this, you would improve your skills quite a bit just by glancing at other people's work. And thanks to AudioKinetic's Strata set of libraries, you can finally start doing this. Strata is a set of sound effects libraries created by AudioKinetic, which is the same people who make WISE. These are essentially collections of sounds organized in such a way that they're very, very useful for game audio and tie really, really nicely into the middleware we all know and love, Weiss. But before we continue as a heads up and full disclosure, Audio Kinetic did give me a free copy of Strata to check out for this video, but I specifically asked them not to pay me for this video, so full disclosure and all that. Now, why would a sound library be great for learning about sound design? Well, in most cases, they aren't really all that helpful from a learning point of view. Most of the time, they're just full of really well-designed sounds that you just plop into your project, edit, and process. But you don't really know what went into those super cool, really well-designed sounds. And thus, you're not really learning from using them as much. And even though for work purposes this is completely fine, the more designed sounds you get from these libraries, the less you're kind of putting together in your own head of how these individual sounds were made, and thus you can kind of rely on them as a crutch over time. But unlike most sound libraries, Strata doesn't only come with designed sounds, but it comes with Reaper projects showing you how those designed sounds were made. Not only can you take those sounds and break them apart layer by layer and change them from the original source, but let's jump over to the computer computer and I'll show you how this all works. All right, here we are in Reaper. Now I just want to show you how to get Strata set up. It's really straightforward. It works basically no differently from any other sound effects library that you would import into Reaper. But basically you want to open up your Media Explorer. If you don't know how to do that, just make sure to search your actions list, your shortcuts list for Media Explorer and make a little shortcut for that. But Basically, you just want to go over here to this left-hand kind of grayish area, or it might be different colored based on your theme. Right-click, create new database, and I'll just call this Strata 2 just for a test. And then just right-click that new database that you made, add path to database, and then you can basically just find where Strata lives, double-click it, and it'll add all those files to your database, which is basically just a search function for Reaper to find all those sounds. But I'll just delete that second one we just made because we don't need that. But here we are with Strata, so you'll see it works like basically any other Media Explorer library that you'll import. You'll see the sounds and all that good stuff. But there's something I want to show you, which is related to the Reaper projects that we talked about earlier. So if I go to the search box and just type in dot RPP, which is the file extension for any Reaper project, you'll see a bunch of Reaper projects pop up. So for example, you'll see that these are the actual projects with the original layers and sound effects making up the final designed sounds within the library. So for example, I'll just click one of these randomly. I'll say this industrial additional industrial project. If I double click that and give it a sec to load, you'll see that it shows all of these different sounds that make up this part of this library. So this industrial sound library, it'll show you all these individual sounds and individual layers and even the processing that's used on each of these tracks as well. So if I hit X, you'll see that you can even see the plugins which come with Strata when you get the paid version and you'll be able to even see how they processed each of these sounds. 
but I'm gonna close this one because I wanna show you one with more layers to it. So I'll just close this guy, open up my Media Explorer again, and what I'm gonna look up is actually a rifle library that I like. So I'm just gonna type in Enfield, and let's put our output and dot rpp and here we go so we have a bunch of old rifles essentially and i'll click let's just do this enfield free rifle so i'll just double click that and here we go you can see that we have these different rifle shots essentially made up of different layers so now if i zoom in You'll see all these markers up here saying shot body, shot, shot tail, all these different kind of makeups of this sound. And you can even see in the track title what each of these folders are. So you can see basic layer one body. So these are basically the body sounds of this rifle being shot. So if I click this, you can see that inside this folder, you'll see things like burst high, burst low, bullet crack, bullet whiz. And just within a second, you'll see that within a simple rifle shot, there are so many layers making this up. Now I'm just gonna hit play so we can just hear it. So you can see that sounds really freaking cool. But if I just solo one of these, you can see there's the crack of that. There's some boomy body to it. I'll go down to one of these other layers. You'll see these weight layers, these kicks. You'll see that there's an even a synthetic kick built into this World War II Lee Enfield rifle. So just like that, you get an insight into, oh, these sounds, even these ones that sound really realistic or cinematic, they sometimes have fake or synthetic elements or elements that don't belong to the original sound built in. Now, something to pay attention to really, really closely when you analyze these sorts of sounds is to zoom in and notice that not all of these layers are playing all at the same time. So if I zoom in here, you'll see that all of these layers are starting at different times or close to different times. Now, something to keep in mind here that's really important is the cadence or timing of your sounds. A lot of beginners will make the mistake of having all their layers just play at the exact same time as much as possible. And that's a big mistake. You don't want everything to just start at the exact same time because sometimes you'll lose a lot of character, a lot of body, and it won't sound as satisfying because everything will be just trouncing one another and effectively not making a very satisfying sound. So usually you'll want to play around with the timing of your layers. Now, sometimes you'll have sounds that all start at the same time, that's fine. But play around with this, and even if it's little micro, micro adjustments, it makes a big difference. So you can hear there's a buildup before the crack of this rifle, which makes it really, really satisfying. Something else to keep in mind is the fact that there are variations on the sound. So you can hear it's not just one gunshot, you have several here. So I'll just play the second one. Play this third one. So you can hear there are slight variations on each of these. And something I recommend you do and look into when analyzing these libraries that will be so, so, so helpful is to check how they did their variations. And the way you can do that, pretty straightforward and pretty simply, is to basically solo your layers and see which ones are they changing and which ones are they keeping the same between each of these shots. Because a really common misconception is that people think, oh, if I'm making a variation on a sound, every single layer needs to be different. And that's not true. For example, let's listen to this first crack and see if it changes between different sounds. Okay, so we have that. So you can see they're very, very similar, if not the same across. They're, they have some slight differences, but they're very, very, very similar. Now let's listen to, say, example, this kick. You can hear that this kick is the same across all these variations. So there will be layers that you need to look into to see, okay, are these the ones that I change? Are these the ones that I keep the same? What are they doing to see that are the same? And what are they doing to kind of change up between each of these variations? How different do each of these variations sound? And what kind of a difference does that make in the sound when they change one or two or several layers? So you can poke around in here and see all this information so quickly. You can notice the timing, you can notice the processing that they're using, if any. You can see that they have some plugins here using a plugin called Enrage, which has a bunch of stuff 
built into it. We won't go into that right now, but it comes with Strata. And when you are analyzing all this, and even if you look at it just for five to 10 minutes a day, it makes a really huge difference. And just within a few minutes of analyzing a sound, looking at it, you can see, oh wow, these rifle shots, for example, they're made up of so much more than just a simple single shot timed identically to the other layers in that sound. Now on top of what I just showed you, the thing I recommend you do is grab the free Strata sample pack and just open one Reaper project per day and just analyze it for just five to 10 minutes. Lately, I've been doing this as kind of a morning warm up before I do any real sound design work for the day. And this has given me a lot of great ideas and reminded me of some fundamentals. It's reminded me on how important layering the right layers is and how important it is to just find the right pieces to put together and how little you need to rely on processing like reverb or bit crushing or anything like that to make a great sound in the end if you're picking the right samples. And you can really easily hear what the right samples are by taking a look at these projects that very advanced sound designers have created. Now, of course, taste plays a role in this, but you'll get some idea of what works and what doesn't. Now, yes, you do need Reaper to make the most of this, but if you're in game audio and not using Reaper at this point and haven't joined the cult, come on. So many of us are already here with our hoods and robes, so happy, so just come on in. We'll welcome you with open arms. I have a whole series of tutorials and an entire playlist for Reaper for Game Audio right here. So if you want to just learn from scratch and know how to use Reaper for Game Audio, that's the perfect place to start. And no, before you ask, if you are a complete beginner at sound design, I honestly don't think Strata is something that you need to jump in and buy right now. Once you're making a full-time income or close to it, Strata is a great deal. But at first you can get by really, really far with just some free libraries and the free stuff that Strata gives you. Now, if you want to learn more about things like layering and blending sounds and putting them together and timing them and all these fundamentals that basically every sound designer needs to know, then I would recommend you look into my next upcoming course, Step-by-Step -step Sound Design. This is a course that will dive into all these key fundamental skills that so many sound designers just don't get access to as they're coming up and as they're learning. But they'll apply to basically any project that you ever work on. Pre-orders for this course will open later in November 2023, and there'll be 350 slots open. It's gonna sell out, all my courses do, but hopefully this gives people enough of a chance because previously my courses have sold out in literal minutes. And once that course sells out, that's it. It takes me a long time to reopen a course after it sells out so I can focus on the students who are in there. So if you want to find out more information about this course and be one of the first to sign up, just join my newsletter in the card up above or in the description down below. All right, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. Go pet a dog.